Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 33 of the chapter Thermodynamics. Moving on with our solution of the NCRT textbook exercises, we are now going to do question 6.19 of your text. The question reads that there is a reaction 2A gaseous plus B gaseous gives you 2D gaseous. It's a hypothetical equation where all the reactants and the products are gaseous in nature. And you have two moles of A, one mole of B, resulting in the formation of two moles of T. Delta U naught is given to us, which is minus 10.5 kilojoules. And delta S naught is given to us, which is minus 44.1 joules per Kelvin. Why has the naught been put here? It means it is the standard change in internal energy and the standard change in entropy. What is the standard word being here? It means that the reaction is taking place under standard conditions. What are standard conditions? Standard conditions are where all the reactants and their products are in their most stable form at 298 Kelvin. Right? The temperature is 298 Kelvin and the pressure is 1 bar. Under these conditions, when the reaction takes place, we call it to be a reaction that's taking place under standard conditions. So, you have to calculate the change in free energy, not, that is under these the same conditions for the reaction and predict whether the reaction is spontaneous. Alright, now what are we supposed to find out? We are supposed to find out delta G. And in order to do that, let us first see what all do we have. We have an equation and we have been given the value of delta U. First of all, it is under standard state. Therefore, the temperature for this reaction is 298 Kelvin. This is given to us. Okay? Then, delta U, delta U naught is equal to minus 10.5 kilojoules. And this is in joules. We would like all readings to be in joules. Therefore, I will convert this into minus 10500 joules. So, by multiplying it by 1000, I have converted the kilojoules into joules. And delta S is given to me. Delta S naught is equal to minus 44.1 joule per Kelvin. Right? Now this is also done. This is given to us. What else is given to us? Okay. Right now this is what we have. And this is what we are starting with. So we have been asked for the free energy. So now we know that delta A G, the equation that we will be using is delta G is equal to delta H naught minus T delta S naught. Right? This is the equation that we use. Let me remind you the actual equation is delta H minus T delta S minus S delta T. But since most of the reactions take place at a constant temperature, that is delta T becomes zero, therefore that value is dropped out and this becomes the equation that we have. So, uh, where delta H is the change in enthalpy and T, delta S, is temperature at which the reaction is taking place, which is 298 Kelvin, and delta S is the change in entropy. But we have been given delta U and not delta H. And there is another equation that we have which relates delta U to delta H, which says that delta H is equal to delta U, I'm putting the knots here, plus delta NGRT where delta Ng stands for the change in number of moles, R is the gas constant and T is the temperature at which the reaction is taking place. So you can relate, uh, you can calculate enthalpy from internal energy using this equation if you have gaseous reactants and products. Now, what is the change in number of moles of the gaseous reactants and products? Delta N. So you can calculate delta Ng, that is the change in number of moles of gaseous uh, reactants and products. We have two moles of gaseous products. So we have number of moles of products minus number of moles of reactants. How many moles do we have in the products? Look here, we have two moles. So we write two. And how many moles of reactants do we have? Two plus one, three. So we have three. Two minus three makes delta Ng minus one. The value of delta Ng is minus one. Now what is R? R is the gas constant. And R is usually the value since we uh, measure in terms of joules, in terms of Kelvin, and we are talking in terms of moles. Therefore, 8.314 joule per Kelvin per mole is the value of 
the gas constant that we most commonly use. And now, having known all these values, how are we now going to calculate this? The reason we found out delta H was that we did not have delta H, we had delta U. So we will substitute the value of delta H in this equation because our aim is to find out delta G. So our equation becomes delta G naught is equal to, in place of delta H we put this, that is delta U plus delta N naught, delta N G R T, that makes H minus T delta S naught, right? That becomes our final equation. From this, we can calculate delta G. Let us now substitute the values since we have all the values. So delta G negative, sorry, naught would be equal to, what is delta U naught? Delta U naught is given to us. It is minus 10500, the comma is in the wrong place, 10, 500 joules is the value of delta u plus delta ng now delta ng delta n is a negative value so i'll write minus one into r is 8.314 joules per kelvin per mole into t the temperature given to us is 298 kelvin right minus T delta S minus 1 you could write mole here so in the end minus 1 mole change in the number of moles so the mole here and the mole here will get cancelled per Kelvin and Kelvin will get cancelled you'll ultimately have joules here and always keeping in mind that your units uh, should be and uh, should match minus T delta S T is 298 Kelvin and Delta S given to us is into It's a negative value now minus 44.1 Joule per Kelvin right now It's a minus of this whole value which since this there's a minus here and a minus here this entire value this entire term will turn out to be positive and about the units the kelvin and per kelvin get cancelled so you have joules joules and joules in all the three um, amounts so you'll get your answer in joules when you solve this you get minus 10500 joules and when you solve the second part of the equation that is this one what you get you get minus 2477 minus 2477 2477.57 put it in a bracket because there's a negative and positive here and minus the minus and minus would become plus now and therefore this will turn out to be a positive value 13141 positive value 13141.8 and all the units are joules in the end all of this is in joules and when you solve this what do you get you get 164.23 joules 164.23 joules which is a positive value now since delta g naught is greater than zero or is positive the what about the reaction would it be spontaneous or would it be non-spontaneous since delta g is positive this will be the reaction will be non-spontaneous so that was our question that for this reaction delta u is given delta s is given you have to calculate delta g for the reaction and predict whether the reaction is spontaneous or not this reaction is non-spontaneous and this is the value of delta G naught. Positive 164.23 joules. Let us now move on to the next question that is question 6.20. Now this is question 6.20 that is the 20th question of the 6th chapter of your NCRT textbook exercise. The question reads that the equilibrium constant for a reaction is 10. That is K is given to us. It can be KP, it could be KC, whatever. The value of K 
is a ratio between the concentrations of the products and the reactants or the pressures of the products and the reactants. As I told you, this is the next chapter that we are going to be doing and we will understand this in much more details uh, when we do that chapter. What will be the value of delta G naught? R is given to you, that is 8.314 joules per Kelvin per mole and T is given to you which is 300 K. There is a little contradiction here. When you say delta G naught, it means that the reaction is taking place under standard conditions and standard, at standard conditions the temperature is 298 Kelvin. But the temperature that is given to us here is 300 Kelvin. So 300 Kelvin and 298 Kelvin has a, have a difference of just about 2 degrees and which is not a major difference. So we we'll ignore this fact and we we'll, in the equation we will use uh, T as 300 Kelvin. What is the equation for delta G in terms of equilibrium constant? The equation for delta G naught for e in terms of equilibrium constant is minus 2.303 RT log of K. If you remember this. So we have all the values with us. So let us simply substitute it. It's a simple question. It will be minus 2.303. The value of R is 8.314 joules per Kelvin per mole. And temperature is 300 Kelvin. And log K would be log 10. Now the value of log 10, anything um, which is the same number and to the same base is 1. So log 10 to the base 10, the log of 10 to the base 10 would be uh, 1. So we will just calculate this and in terms of units, the Kelvin goes away with this. It gets cancelled so you will get delta G in terms of joules per mole. So this would be equal to, let us calculate this, this comes out to be equal to minus 5744 minus 5744 joules per mole right and since this is a large number we could write it as minus 5.744 kilojoules per mole so that's that's the value of delta G that you would get from this and since it's a negative value would the reaction be spontaneous or non-spontaneous? Since it's a negative value the reaction would be spontaneous. So this was question 20 and with this I'll finish this video. If you found it helpful please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye bye for now.